What's up, Joe? <laughs> Not much. How you doing? Wait. This is the historic sawmill. So this historic sawmill has actually been on this site since about 1905. The building that we're gonna go into was actually erected in 1937 through a grant from the U.S. Forest Service to the city of Detroit. So at one time, any log that came down within the city of Detroit came here for repurpose. They would mill everything, nothing was wasted. So it came here and then it was such a big asset to the city of Detroit forestry that they encased it in this building. This building is what my nonprofit, the Arbor Culture Society of Michigan Foundation, is fundraising to restore. So phase one has been done. Phase one was uh, more structural, documents, blueprints. It was more of a, can this building be restored? And it was yes. So now we have new roofs, fascia, soffit, gutters, and then phase two is windows and doors and access. Uh, so hopefully by the end of this year, the front of this building will be complete. And uh, we can actually have people come in and see how this mill operated back in the early days. What's interesting about this mill is that being here as long as it has been, even uh, pe people my parents' age never really knew that there was a sawmill on Belle Isle. So we're gonna go inside right now to see a sawmill that used to run on steam that was converted to electric that just about everybody on this island or in southeast Michigan never knew existed. So we're gonna go check it out. So we got so far down to the soffit. So this is all new. So phase one was structural roofs, roof decking, everything had to be done to get the roof watertight. Everything is being uh, completed according to the State Historical Society. So when this is done, we could have a historical marker on this. And by having a historical marker on this building, that opens us up for historical grants, which could keep this building running for years to come. Ah. So where we're standing is back in the, the sewing days, they would lay the logs this way, and they would use cant hooks and roll the logs down these rails to this site. This site right here, the carriage that we're gonna see inside would roll out, they'd roll the log onto it, lock it on with log dogs, and the head sawyer would run the mill past the circular blade. It's a 60 inch circular blade that we're gonna see that's inside. It's one of the original blades that's been on the sawmill. Uh, this is the head sawyer station. This is where the, the guy in charge stands. So this throttle right here, because this is belt driven, would be in one way, out the other. So depending on the diameter of the log that your guys outside loaded on here, I would be running this forward, running it right past this saw blade. And on the very last log dog, there's a ruler with the degree mark on there. It'd be my responsibility to whatever the cut list was for that piece of timber, I'd have to cut to that. So if I needed three one by ones, 12 foot long, I could actually adjust this saw by ratcheting the adjustment. Every click's a half inch. So I know click, click is an inch. Four clicks, two inches. I could be able to cut the dimensional lumber and then run it right past the saw blade. So we're gonna walk on down just a little bit farther and I'm gonna show you some of the log dogs. So this is the adjustment we were talking about. Uh, it was my responsibility as a head sawyer to adjust. Now it's a little dingy, but you really can't see it, but there's a log scale on that last carriage head. So depending on what I wanted to make, it was my responsibility to do this. So if I pull it this way, I'm backing it up. So I'm backing it up and I'm gonna run it out to my guys. They're gonna roll it, get a different position on the log. Let go of that, and you can see now, Every one of those clicks is a half inch. And you can see it moving in. So I would be looking at my gauge, thinking I want that to be one inch. Set. Oh, you can adjust it very oh, yeah, specifically. Right down to the half inch. So I can make dimensional lumber. What's neat is that these boards that are right here, the one unique pattern on a circular sawmill blade is the circular kerf. Right now, because of antique wood, it's very desirable to find 
stuff like this for rustic building and furniture and benches and tables. So you can see where the sawmill blade was spinning around and made this circular curve. These boards were probably milled, they were upstairs, probably 40s or 50s, and were stored upstairs until we rediscovered the building and cleaned up upstairs and found all these original sawn timber from the sawmill. And we're gonna find something cool to make with them. So that's my job. So we'd come down here, we'd go past the sawmill blade, it would fall here, tail sawyers would pick it up, out the door, over to the cutoff saw, which is again, it's pretty cool too. So let me show you that. Again, end grain, you're thinking about felling a tree. So we took a log and just showed you how we ran a log through the sawmill. Now these slabs that were cut came out to here. Now there's some other carpenters that would be out here and you have this cutoff blade. This cutoff blade is ran off of a belt drive, very similar to that. So they would get this in here and they would cut the board square. So the whole thing was to make this square. It's seized up right now, but this handle, you would pull it forward, the blade would come forward, engage the belt, and you'd have a cutoff saw. So now the ends were square, ready to be repurposed. Inside here, you'll be able to see the original uh, belt harness, and when the building was designed, it was gonna be designed to be run off of steam, but because electricity, everything, they converted to electrical. So this whole sawmill is electric, which is kind of state of the art, you think, for 1937. Wow. So, so what we're gonna walk into, we have to be very careful, is that it's not open to the public, is the old historic stables. This used to be the stables where they housed the horses for the city of Detroit workforce. Uh, you kind of see the stables, been repurposed. Again, they're trying to get these clean and safe for the public again. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna tread lightly, we're gonna go in there, I wanna show you a tree, or the cookies from a tree we took down last year, just to show the sheer size. And I'm gonna explain why I think these cookies are value of history. So follow me. that we have in here drying I wanted to show this to you is very important is that this is one of the largest bur oaks that were on the island and, it, and what makes it important is that if you believe it or not 1796 is when the British bought the island from the Indians it was right around 300 years ago it's not that long ago if you think about it we believe these trees are in excess of 300 years one of these slabs are at Michigan State University in the dendrology department and we're gonna date these logs. I feel that these logs right here were here during a time that they sold the island to the British. So this could have seen the signing. And I wanna make a timeline out of this for the island that shows everything through history that happened on Belle Island, the city of Detroit. And here's the discs that are gonna do it. So you got a crude look now, but in a year or so, we're gonna have them on a big steel rack where they're standing upright with pins and numbers on there to annotate in this tree's growth rings through this tree's life cycle. What happened that year? that this tree can tell us. There's a lot of history in tree rings, and uh, dendro and chronology can find that out by sanding this down to a thousand grit sandpaper. And you can read events, weather patterns, everything by looking at these rings. So it's gonna be pretty neat when these are all done, polished up and on display. So another really cool thing here, um, this log would have been too big for the sawmill. That sawmill can only do a 26 inch diameter log. These are almost 60. So what they would have had to have done is they probably had to do it the old fashioned way, which would have been a two man buck saw and a pit saw, and they would have had a hand cut that to a diameter and a dimension they could get it on the mill to use it. So even trees this big, they were all repurposed. And back in the day, we didn't always have chainsaws. That would have been felled with an ax. Paul Bunyan stuff. So it's kind of neat that the DNR is helping us clean up in here. Uh, another thing is neat that they gave us this. The foundation is working on restoring this historic portable sawmill. So the difference between a circular mill and how it was done and what a lot of people have now. So this is a band mill that we can use now to show the process of mill and timber. So we have the bottom half of this all redone. We have new hydraulic lines on it. Everything's running right now. We have to get the power head tuned up. And then we'll be milling regular logs day to day on this mill. 
until this one's up and running. It's a, it's a pretty cool story. Uh, the Arbor Culture Society of Michigan Foundation, we have a website, you can go on there. You can, if you go on to uh, YouTube, you can click on Sawmill on Detroit and you can see some videos of me on it. And the historic video is black and white. So there's easy ways to reach us. Again, it's the ASM Foundation, Arbor Culture Society of Michigan Foundation. And uh, once you find us, send us a message. Um, we're always looking for support. Uh, help and if you're in the area and you just want to walk through let me know i'll be more than happy to meet you down here and give you a tour what's your podcast again podcast we started a podcast i'm a co-host of discovering forestry it's all trees so if you can't find me on there you can find me on discovering forestry we also have another media uh, outlet as much as we have a facebook page which is the arbor culture society of michigan foundation facebook page we got all kinds of stuff posting on there like it and then move it on over you can be able to find us on there also that's sweet We gotta keep it a secret so we're ready to show the world.